这个这个多少钱？二十。二十块。二十块。Five bucks. North North Korea. Ah, here we go. Ah, Kim Jong Un. So this is China right here. Right across the river is North Korea, and it is absolutely dark. President Xi Jinping said China and the U.S. share common interests in the denuclearization and maintaining peace on the Korean Peninsula. I have great respect for the president of China. So I told him, I said, you'll make a much better deal on trade. Get rid of this menace or do something about the menace of North Korea, because that's what it is. It's a menace right now. The relationship between China and North Korea has always been complicated. China's Mao Zedong famously said that the two countries were as close as lips and teeth. A relationship forged in blood and steel during the Korean War against the United States. The leaders have famously kept up with that appearance since the times of Mao and North Korea's founder Kim Il-sung and into the next generation with Kim Jong-il. But something's changed. Kim Jong-un. Since he came into power in 2012, this supposedly close relationship has chafed at the seams. As leader, Kim has never left the country, not even to visit Beijing like his father and his grandfather had. This is the last time Kim was seen with a high-level Chinese leader, and it's been downhill since. Despite North Korea's reliance on China, mistrust has been brewing on both sides. China and North Korea share an 880-mile border split by two rivers, the Yalu and the Tumen, both coming from the same source, a slumbering supervolcano straddling the border known to Chinese as Changbaishan, and to the Koreans, all Koreans, as Mount Pektu. Many believe this border is the lifeline of the North Korean regime. 90% of North Korea's trade is with China. I have been reporting from inside North Korea for many years. Our reporting will be closely watched, but we expect to show you a country that the world knows very little about. But we have rarely been allowed to leave their showcase capital of Pyongyang to see the rest of the country. I'm curious to find out exactly what we could see from over here. Our plan to travel the entire border, or as far as we can, from the Yellow Sea in the south to the regions rattled by Pyongyang's nuclear testing in the north. Our starting point, Dandong. It's a bustling, unmistakably Chinese city of commerce and condos, connecting to the North Korean city of Sinuju by a single bridge, the Sino-Korean Friendship Bridge. 70% of China-North Korea trade passes across this bridge. Despite UN sanctions, there's a steady stream of trucks and tourists going back and forth. I would love to know what's inside these trucks, what this trade is. So I want to see where those uh, trucks go when they come off the bridge. I think they wind around and go into a transportation center. Maybe that's where they unload what they've got and load it up again in the morning. Yep, written in Korean licenses, so these are clearly North Korean. Looks like the, the back is open. Let's see what they got in there. This thing may, may have already been unloaded. So this was clearly something they loaded up, took it over to North Korea, 
earlier today and then they just came back, so they're probably gonna reload for tomorrow. So all of these trucks have North Korean license plates. Well, this was loaded up, now it's empty. Thousands of curious Chinese tourists descend on Dandong to gawk at their reclusive neighbors from across the Yalu. All along the river, there are many tourist spots set up like some human safari. What, what did you see? What do you think? Yeah, have, you, have you been there before? Never been there? Uh, you want to go there? No, 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 no. No? <laughs> That's why. Right. What do you think about all this nuclear testing? Oh, I don't think they are as good as us. <laughs> you have better nuclear bombs in China than they do. This site is called One Leap Across. That's how close North Korea is. Okay, here's the border right across this field. This says no drones flying over the border. And look at this warning. Do not converse or exchange objects with people on the other side of the border. They told us to be careful. And warnings not to irritate the North Koreans and don't even try crossing. Peering across, glimpses of what appears to be normal life. Mundane, but hypnotic at the same time. There is a way to get even closer. Can we get on the boat? There's a lot of tourists. Check a fish on Kwaima. This is a fast boat. So I guess we're gonna go over the line into uh, into North Korea from here. Back and forth, he says it's a it's an unclear line in the middle of the river. But this river is split. China on this side, North Korea on that side. We'll see if we run into any uh, military. The captain tells us we've technically entered North Korean waters. So none of this, we can't shoot any of this? So this right here is where all the, the generals' houses are. So it's kind of a joke. They said if there's a conflict, some kind of war, that they can get a lot faster to China than the rest. All around us, another surprising sight. No photos, huh? North Korean boats filled with North Korean products. Ginseng, kimchi, alcohol, and cigarettes. A sort of floating duty-free store, cash only. The other tourists in our boat were ready to shop. You can see that she was selling things right off the beach of North Korea. You can buy your cigarettes a lot cheaper, but certainly not very safe. All of the money from this goes back to her, to the people on shore, back to the government official, officially. All right, so we're told this is a pretty fancy North Korean restaurant with North Korean waitresses. Very North Korean entertainment. An estimated 40,000 North Koreans work here in the Dandong area and send cash back directly to the North Korean government. Down over here? Okay. Thanks. One of the highest profile jobs, waitress and performers in North Korean restaurants.
They kindly asked us not to videotape. The waitress told us they live and work in China without their families for three years, with the promise of getting better jobs in Pyongyang when they get back. But just outside of Dandong, the symbiotic relationship starts to show signs of fraying. So we're just heading south of Dandong, heading to the, what's called the New District. This is where a brand new bridge is being under construction uh, for the last seven years or so, but it's just almost stopped. It's slowed down, and it's probably because of Kim Jong-un when the new leader came to power. This was his father's project. And it's just, the buildings are not completely filled. The, Construction is not what they thought it was going to be. People are saying this is a catastrophe. We meet Xing Chujiang, a truck driver who used to trade with North Korean farmers and most recently helped in the construction of the new bridge. He moved his family to this new district, which was built for 400,000 new residents, but only a quarter of that has shown up. So he's going to take us now to his building where there were about 2,000 rooms that were supposed to be filled. So we'll see what, uh, what his life is here in this new district. <laughs> ah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Ah, beautiful wind. This is Chaoxian. That's mm. North Korea over there. Ah, ah. This is Chaoxian. This is Chaoxian. This is Chaoxian. Ah, North Korea everywhere. So you're, you're able to see normal North Korean people. We, we, we can never leave Pyongyang. Kim Jong-un is testing so many nuclear bombs and launching missiles. Is there, is there much fear here? Of course. So what, what do you think will happen in this new district if, if this relationship with China and North Korea comes back to normal? The bridge is not opened yet. Okay. <laughs> so you, you look at this bridge, this is supposed to be the great dream. This is going to step up the relationship between these two countries, China and North Korea. But it's just not opening. This $350 million project built by the Chinese was expected to handle 50,000 people and 20,000 vehicles a day. It now sits as a bridge to nowhere, literally. Satellite pictures show that that bridge abruptly ends on the North Korean side in a dirt field. Why, why is it taking so long to open this bridge? Jiang Songtek was Kim Jong-un's uncle, the one he brutally executed in 2013 for treason. Jiang championed closer economic integration with China and opening up North Korea's economy. This bridge was supposed to be the linchpin. You see that watchtower? That's where the North Koreans are staring at the Chinese, and the Chinese have their video cameras on that tower right there to look at the North Koreans. As we drive north of Dandong, an unexpected scene. The Chinese military, training on the river with bridging exercises, guards lining the road to keep people from stopping, a reminder that there are 150,000 Chinese troops stationed along this border with their supposed ally. China's biggest fear is that a regime collapse would bring refugees flooding over this border and U.S.-backed South Korean troops right up to it. So this is a new Great Wall. It was uh, existing back in the 15th century, but it went down. They built it in 1992 again as, a, as tourism. So they say it's about 160 yards up to the top of this mountain, and hopefully we'll be able to look out over the Yalu River, seen in North Korea. Make 
是亚亚路，等下亚路，哪个是朝鲜？嗯，这都是朝鲜。Uh, oh, that, that, that's our farm. Oh. There you go. Oh, so right here, this, this farm area right here is, uh, that is North Korea. So this is absolutely the best view we've seen so far. You can see there's the Yalu River. Right on that side are all the buildings, the successful economy of China. And then this is North Korea. It's nothing but land, agriculture, and buildings. This is it, this is just gorgeous. You're, are you afraid of these nuclear bombs that Kim Jong-un is developing? You're worried about worried. it. Yeah, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. Mm. So what do you think we can do about it? Can we stop him from doing this? Peaceful solution. Uh, Peaceful solution. What do you think about North Korea? Uh, 所以說總是有這個我聽說有透度的 America we think that Kim Jong Un is, is dangerous and he's very different he's very strange 這應該是美國人的中國人應該不是這個印象中國人給聽這個印象就是聽著有點坦德不要不要臉你中國給什麼我要什麼完了沒有的我還跟你要這就是所以我們住在丹東邊天天能看到出進出口貿易啊<笑
Okay, so we're going down underneath, huh? Is he opening the gate? Okay, so he's so he's claiming that he's sneaking us in underneath the bridge. <laughs> it's just a secret. Know, maybe just here. This is bizarre. This guy's kind of mysterious where he's taking us. What is this, like a secret place? Do you know any defectors that have ever come here? You can go on this to Chaoxian Guo Xi Chao Tao. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you ever get over there? You can go there, though, right? Now it's not bad. Chaoxian Guo Xi Jinzhang, you go on there. It's about a year ago, it's about a year ago. But what is the tension? Is this tension because of the, the nuclear tests? So do you blame uh, the, the Americans more than the North Koreans for stopping this tourism? I think he's getting nervous about being interviewed, isn't he? Every year, the annual joint military exercises between the U.S. and South Korea sends North Korea into a defensive frenzy. Pyongyang, the drills just over their southern border, justifies their chase of missile and nukes at all costs. In turn, the Chinese fault the drills for setting off North Korea. I would say this is two football fields away from North Korea. Love to know who's in that. Nerves apparently calm. The tour guide offers to take us further to the new bridge in town. I know, it's, it's interesting that even, even here in China, they're blaming the United States for this, this tension, almost as if it has nothing to do with North Korea. You know, we can see that down in Dandong, where we just were, there was, there was tourism going back and forth. There was a lot of trade. We saw the trucks, we saw the trains. This might be completely different this further north. Jian Port, People's Republic of China. Ah, uh, the military area off limit. But this is the uh, bridge right here. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna get out here for that much closer. So is he concerned about the police? That's a prison right there? Kim Jong-un built this bridge? Why did Kim Jong-un want to build this bridge? For a war, get ready for the war. Is that what Kim Jong-un said? Where do you hear that from? He tells us his friends in the Chinese military told him about the bridge, which he says is just wide enough for two tanks to go across at the same time. It's meant for the North Korean generals to get over the border if the war breaks out. Once we get back in our vans, the tour guide speeds off. So this is a, uh, this is a military zone, so we should probably get out of here. So we just walk about a thousand yards along this train rail, you'll end up in North Korea. Go. As we leave the train tracks, we get spotted by the Chinese army outpost in the distance. So I, I guess it came true. The, the military came out and they stopped us and take us inside to their headquarters. And they told us that we're in the military area and so we shouldn't be there. But then they ultimately let us go. They didn't take any of our recordings. So I think we're good to go, but we're just gonna head up to another town to stay tonight instead of staying in, in Jian. So we'll see what happens next. Driving north, we reach the source of the Yalu River, Mount Pektu. So we're going to go to the top of the mountain now. This is perhaps the most sacred place for all Koreans. The border here is split by this immense volcano known as Changbai Shan in Chinese and Pektu San in Korean. It is known as the spiritual home of the Korean people. 
Every day when North Korea State TV starts its programming, the national anthem plays against images of Mount Pektu and the sacred Lake Chan, which sits in its vast crater. The volcano looms ever-present in the daily lives of North Koreans. So much so that after their successful ICBM launch in July, news of its success was announced against the backdrop of none other than Mount Pektu. Test firing of intercontinental ballistic rocket Hwasong-14 successful. In fact, the ruling Kim family derives their legitimacy from the mountain. Kim Jong-un's grandfather and father are often depicted standing on top of Mount Pektu. Their enduring myth says the sacred blood of Mount Pektu runs through the veins of the Kim family and therefore they are the rightful chosen leaders of the Korean people. So we join the busloads of tourists to hike to the top of the volcano. It is, according to uh, mythology, this is where the first king of the Korean kingdom began. He was born here. Also, Kim Il-sung fought back the Japanese during World War II. His son, Kim Jong-il, they say was born here. Although, it should be said that the real records say that he was probably born in the Soviet Union. So finally, there's a very popular folk song. You're from South Korea? South Korea. South Korea. What do you, what do you think about this? Oh, yeah. Many of the tourists here are from South Korea. They only have access to their sacred mountain here on the China side. Whether you're in the north or the south, this is the sacred place. Zhongguo, China. North Korea. Does this mean we're in North Korea right now with the rest of the Chinese tourists? <laughs> So there's this story in, in North Korea that when Kim Jong-il died, the ice in this lake cracked and it was so loud that it shook heaven and earth. So that's the line that goes between, this between China and North Korea, right there. China, I think are tall yet. The only thing I see from North Korea over there is, uh, is on that ridge down from the peak. A little building, fence. About a hundred miles just over this ridge into North Korea, they say that they're, uh, that's where the location is for one of the uh, nuclear test sites. And they've actually felt that when, when these things have blown. What's it like to be here, right next to North Korea? For, for the first time, I, I see, see the um, site. Yeah, well, how do you feel? Uh, very exciting and one, wonderful. Uh, for uh, the one person in Korea, uh, I'm sad, very sad. Someday it will be one Korea again? Mm, yes, yeah. uh, someday it will be. <laughs> Let's go to North Korea! <laughs>
Leaving Mount Pektu, the border is now formed by the Tumen River. So the signs all have both Chinese and Korean now. We enter China's predominantly Korean region. Half of China's two million ethnic Koreans live in this region. And this is Yanji, their largest city. And much to China's chagrin, this region feels the direct impact from Pyongyang's nuclear testing. Let's get right to that breaking news. Successful nuclear test by North Korea. They claimed it overnight. South Korea confirms this is just the latest in a series of provocations from North Korea. It certainly is, George. This overnight test is believed to be the biggest yet. Last year, as it did this September, the ground shook here because of what happened just over the border. Students across Yanji were evacuated out into the open. At this high school, we met this security guard who felt the shaking So it all happened right over here, huh? What, what it was, it was you're, you're dancing around like this, really? Really, people evacuate? You know this was the uh, nuclear test. Do you think there's going to be another nuclear test on that site? We turn and head towards the border, towards the town of Nanping, along the river. The Tumen River is shallower and calmer than the Yalu, making it more manageable for defectors. Since the mid-1990s, almost 30,000 North Koreans have fled to China. And in recent years, violence and crime have also crossed the border. We say that the, that the North Korean uh, soldiers are underpaid and underfed, and so that's one reason why they've been coming over the river to rob the people here in, uh, in China. And in few cases in Nanping, murder. We run into a checkpoint. So he's looking through all of our bags. Who are they asking for? Are they asking their boss? No, the security, the national security. It's national like the security. FBI. Is, yeah, it's like the FBI. The state security agent arrives. This is about the border. They didn't say anything about the killings. This can't be the same, right? I mean, this is this must be different than it was months ago. They said no, no journalists at all. Even local. They keep us on the side of the road for over an hour. Although they check every vehicle that passes, our van was the only one they turn inside out. After taking pictures of our team and our passports, they let us go. The, the ultimate decision was to turn us around, send us back to where we came from, and not allow us anywhere closer. He said that we can go, cannot go further because the border is not stable, but it can elaborate. Oh, the guy is following us. Will they be following us from from now on? Who knows? But we're going to maybe try a different route back to the border and see what's going on as we go further north. You know, clearly in the south, it was pretty e easy. We were not really uh, stopped by any police or security. But now the further we go north, and we get closer to the, the more pure Korean uh, areas and towns, then clearly it's getting a little bit more difficult. They're more sensitive. We later learned that just a month earlier, seven defectors overpowered North Korean border guards and crossed into China near Nanping. We make one last attempt for the border and head towards the border town of Tumen, named after the river we have yet to see. We pass a sign saying, just eight minutes to North Korea. This is another region Kim Jong-un's uncle had hoped to develop with China before his execution. This is not far from the Russian border. This is, this is, this is wearable. 
Mountains of uh, North Korea. City four. Is it? Thirty yard river to get across. There it is. Kim Il Song and Kim Jong Il. The posters are on top of that building. It's the first time we've seen that across the river. This is the furthest north we've we've gotten so far. It's probably the most narrow river and also most shallow. It's the easiest ones to defect. Got the Chinese flag and you got the North Korean flag side by side. Is that why? So she take that part out? But once again, they stopped us from shooting. The security agent told us we had two choices, leave or sightsee with the rest of the tourists. No more reporting. So we sightsee. What we're really seeing is that the further we go north, the more strict they become here on the China side. And you know, the Chinese came up to us and said, we can't shoot, we can't shoot anything across to the other side. If they do, the North Koreans do see someone doing this, they will complain to the authorities on this side, the China side. So it's obviously this guy's job to stop us from doing it. Now we saw people with their cell phones taking video across the river, but he said, partly because I'm a foreigner, that they're even more strict. All right, we're getting followed again this time by this black car, I think probably until we get out of this town. So this has been quite a trip. I think we gotta wrap it up and head home. All these towns are, I think they're gonna be watching, seeing if we're gonna come. Since our trip, Kim Jong-un conducted North Korea's sixth nuclear test in what appears to be open defiance of China. Beijing has committed to additional rounds of new UN sanctions, banning all imports of North Korean coal, seafood, textiles, and now capping Pyongyang's fuel imports. Until Beijing decides to really cut off the lifeline, the trucks will still crisscross the bridge in Dandong. North Korea will still find a way to send its workers and the empty bridges spanning their border stand ready for whatever they were supposedly built for. Fears on the Chinese side of the border are not over imminent war, but the disruption of their livelihood. China's reluctant tolerance of Kim Jong-un and the inconvenient status quo has always been and always will be about stability within their own borders.